students welcome again to gyandoot 2.0 channel this is dr vibha tiwari assistant professor of english college education rajasthan i hope you all are doing good students in today's video i am going to discuss a very famous sonnet by the great elizabethan poet edmund spenser entitled as one day i wrote her name but before i take up the text of the poem let's have some basic facts regarding the poet himself Spencer was born in London in 1552. There is a kind of ambiguity in uh, regarding his uh, birth date, but the year was 1552. He is very famous for his great allegorical poem, which is epical in nature, entitled as "The Fairy Queen." Apart from "The Fairy Queen," he has also penned various uh, sonnet collections. I especially I would like to mention Amoretti and Epithalamian the shepherd's calendar are also among his famous works he married elizabeth boyle and he died in 1599 in london this sonnet uh, is at number 75 in the sonnet cycle entitled as amoretti which is actually a collection of his love sonnets it contains total 89 sonnets and our sonnet that sonnet that i'm going to take up today it is at number 75 in that book it was published in 1595 and the theme of the sonnet uh, it basically was written by uh, spencer during his courtship and here the speaker addresses indirectly his beloved and he is trying to convince her that their love will live eternally uh, to be very precise i can say that the theme of this poem is the immortality of poetry if we talk about the structure of the sonnet the whole sonnet has been divided into three quatrains and one couplet and the rhyme scheme of the sonnet is a b a b b c b c c d c d e e now let's have the text of the poem one day i wrote her name upon the strand but came the waves and washed it away the poet says one day he was uh, sitting at the beach and he wrote the name of his beloved on the beach on the sand you know, present there at the beach and suddenly the waves came and it's very natural they washed away the name that he had written again i wrote it with a second hand but came the tide and made my pains straight he said he wrote the name again firstly when he had written it it was washed away by the waves second time when he written when he wrote it again tides came and again what he had done painstakingly that means the writing thing the process of writing that he had uh, written the name of his beloved it was again washed away by the tides so on the whole he was engaged in somewhat a futile exercise because we all know it's a very natural thing that if you write something on the beach it is uh, surely going to be washed away away by the waves so same thing happened there also when man said she that tossed in vain essay when uh, this this particular uh, line shows that the beloved was also there at the beach along with the poet so when she saw that the poet is again and again trying to write the name write her name on the beach and it is again and again being washed away by the waves she said uh, you can say a bit of chiding is there she is scolding uh, the poet and he sh- and she said that oh vain man that dost in vain essay she said oh uh, you- Uh, addressing his uh, lo- uh, her lover she said you are doing a futile exercise you are doing a useless task why because you are trying to a mortal thing so to immortalize you are trying to make immortal something which is mortal we all know that uh, not only the name written on the beach but also the human being whose name is written there is is mortal is destined to die so there is no point in trying to make that person or thing immortal by writing the name so that's why she chided the poet and she said that you are doing a useless task 
because you are trying to immortalize something which is mortal which is destined to die for i myself shall like to this decay she said it is the truth death is the ultimate truth and the way my name is being washed away by the waves in the same way the waves of time will wash away me also some day i'll also die the poet, the beloved is very much sure pretty much sure about this fact she says that the same the manner in which the name is being washed away by the waves in the same manner the waves of time will wash her away and ek my name be wiped out likewise and she says like the name that is being written on the shore is being washed by the waves in the same way some day time will wash me away wipe me away that means uh, death is the ultimate truth one has to die sooner or later so there is no point in saying that by writing the name one can immortalize someone this is her point of view not so god god this is archaic english old english now we use said not so god i the poet protested against what the beloved said he said not so it's not going to happen the, this way god i i said let baser things devise to die in dust he says what you said what the beloved said is true for baser things those things which uh, do not have much importance which do not have much significance they according to the poet they are destined to die to die in dust they can they will certainly surely they will mingle with dust with the passage of time but you shall live by fame but the poet says and that too with authority he says you are not going to die so soon you are not going to die that easily because you shall live by fame even if your body gets destroyed with the passage of time you shall live by fame i'll make you immortal through your fame and what will be the process he gives the reply in the later lines he says my words your words use rare shall eternize he says baser things meaner things uh, the things of lower category they are going to die no doubt with the passage of time but time has going to uh, have no effect on your repute on your reputation on your fame why because i am going to make you eternal by writing poem by writing poetry by dedicating my poetry in your name so he, he says i am going to write poem in which i'll be describing your virtues and by way of that poem you are going to live forever and in the heavens write your glorious name a uh, name and not only on earth you are going to be uh, popular even in heaven we don't know whether any such thing uh, occurs or not but most often uh, we have heard that poetry gives rise to bliss and bliss is something heavenly it's, it's a heavenly feeling so somehow he is also uh, you can say pointing towards that fact he says not only on this earth are you going to be eternal but also in heaven also you will be popular so we can say uh, he is trying to emphasize this fact that poetry is eternal and if you are going to write a poem on someone that person is also going to be eternal in the memories of the readers where when as death shall all the world subdue our love shall live and later life renew uh, pointing towards the great uh, biblical truth of doomsday he says when death shall all the world subdue when the whole world will die when whatever is living on this planet is going to die even after that that particular point our love shall live and later life renew we will live through our love our love will become eternal by way of this poem and later life renew and it will give inspiration to the coming generation posterity is always going to uh, be inspired by our love 
So throughout the poem, the poet has tried to highlight the fact that in this world, everything can perish with the passage of time. But if someone has written a poem, a piece of poetry, that is going to live forever. So the whole sonnet is full of passion and it, it is the passion of the poet not only towards his beloved but also towards poetry and these are the lines which have became, which have made spencer so popular in literature so that's all for today i hope you have followed the poem and feel free to comment if you have any queries regarding the poem that's all for today from my side bye bye